I'd like to go ahead and call us together for morning worship. Good morning. It's a gift that God gives us to be together. One of the truths of our Christian faith is that Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so when Jesus uses the word church, we are so used to thinking of uh, buildings and institutions. But what uh, the word actually means is to be a gathering. And so uh, if we were to say that uh, I will build my gathering, uh, that, that we would be uh, fair to Jesus' words. And so one of the things we learn about God's will for our lives is that we don't face life alone, that we face life in community, we face life together with others. And as God's spirit gives each of us gifts, we bless each other with those gifts and we find ways to share them. So it's good for us to be together today and uh, to remember the promises of God. So in the prophet Jeremiah, he says this, this is what I will say to my soul and so recover hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of our God. And some of you saw this magnificent rainbow outside today on the way. Some of you did too. Reminding us of the, the mercies of God, the promise uh, to give us a new future. And so it's good for us to be together. So a couple of announcements uh, let me call your attention to. Uh, the new consistory met this past week, and uh, we're very grateful for the, the five new people who are coming on consistory. And so we had a great opportunity to talk together, to go over things in the life of the church. One of the things that often happens for new members of consistory is they go, wow, I didn't realize all the things that go into making the church exist. And, uh, and so, so they were a little shocked in, at all the stuff that there is, but uh, it was good. And uh, we're really looking forward to the gifts that they bring and the emphases that they bring, particularly in outreach. This is a class coming into consistory that has a strong connection to the community and real concern for our outreach. And so we're very grateful to God for that. Uh, we want to thank every, and there's some notes in there also for you to read today about that. Uh, also, we want to thank everybody who worked on Family Promise this week. We uh, were providing the space while other churches provided um, a support. And so, Doug, do you want to say anything about Family just Promise? A quick thank you to all. Uh, just as a reminder, four weeks from today, we'll be hosting the All Stars of the Times next week. However, when you leave today, you'll see green bags of laundry. Remember those? Okay, so I have. There's a bunch of them out there. If you'd like to help by doing laundry, that's always a big help. It really, really helps us out. Helps me out in particular, but I appreciate that. But if you'd like to do some laundry, it's out there. But um, I'll be doing sign-ups next week, okay? Thank you. Yeah, good. So uh, tomorrow night, uh, Monday night, we'll be uh, sharing Bible study. We're going to continue in the book of Acts. And so I encourage you to join us. We are not so far into Acts already that uh, you can't come. And so come and join us as we study the book of Acts together. And uh, then after that, the elders will be meeting for their first meeting of the year. So let's pray for them. And uh, other than uh, that, I wanted to announce uh, for you the uh, passing of Al Thiel this morning. So some of you uh, have been involved in supporting Al through this uh, uh, illness that he's been facing. Um, he just went on hospice this past week and uh, had some wonderful days of visiting with family and friends. Had really just one day when he was sort of uh, not aware and then he passed this morning. And so uh, we're very sad for that. Al was a special person for us. He would always greet people at the door, um, but he was a man of faith. We talked often about his confidence in resurrection and the grace of Christ, uh, but um, he had some good days with family. So we don't know the arrangements yet, but uh, there will be a memorial service here in, in uh, coming up. So uh, please keep that in mind. So let's take a moment and stand and greet each other today. So it is a good thing for us to be together today. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. They'll receive our morning offering, and, and then we'll pray. Then uh, Praise Band will have a two-stage beginning today. And Justin is going to introduce something, and then Praise Band will come. <clears throat> Let's pray together. 
God, who is the source of every good and perfect gift, God, who gives us this day our daily bread, we come into your presence to be grateful people, to remember that you are the God who is the source of our life and that you are the God in whom we find life. And so we come grateful for the grace that has come to us in Jesus Christ. We come thankful for good news that we have to share with others in a broken world, that there is welcome, that there is strength, and there is a community to belong to as we travel this broken world. And so come among us today by your Holy Spirit. Encourage us where we need encouragement. Guide us where we need direction. And comfort us in our losses, in our griefs, as we gather today. For we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. So I'm going to invite Justin to come first today. Um, uh, he's going to share a little bit about uh, praise bands practice. So we're, we're talking this year so far about Jesus saying, put into practice the words I give you. And so praise band has a practice of their spiritual life. And so Justin's going to share a little bit about that before they come. Good morning, Ocean Community Church. Good it's good to see everybody on this uh, particular morning. Uh, as Pastor said, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk a little bit about Praise Band and who we are. Not just as a worship team, but as a group of Christian people who deal with everything you do. We deal with joys and celebrations, challenges and difficulties, just like everybody else. And so I wanted to just go through our little, our typical routine, quote unquote typical anyway. On Sunday afternoons, Amy and I try, keyword is try, to... Uh, <laughs> try to have the songs for the following week's service picked up. Doesn't always go that way, sometimes it's late, but you do what we can. We have our songs picked out, and then we get the sheet music up on our, the worship team's website so everybody can see what we have to do, and we have time to work on it over the next couple of days. We go through that all the way until Tuesday. Tuesday night, or more recently, Tuesday afternoons, we've been getting, we get together about, oh, between three and five, we start setting up for rehearsal and just start getting, running through as many songs as we can, especially if we have newer songs that we haven't done before. This has been happening more and more. I don't know if we've realized the newer music we're bringing in. But then we actually start rehearsal about 6.30, 7, uh, 7.45, I'm sorry, 6.30, and then we go until 7.45, just running through the songs, seeing exactly what we have to do, trying to determine what it is we really need that'll fit our congregation, that'll fit what what we need here and any changes we have to specifically make or anything that'll suit us. But that's not all we do during our rehearsal night. After we go through the songs and we learn about what we have to do, we adjourn to one of the classrooms. Uh, we try to make it the big room, but we also like the, the youth room. It has all the couches. So trying to squeeze seven to nine people in there is a, it's an experience. <laughs> but up until recently, we well, well up until recently, we, uh, we go in there for our devotional time, and that's something, since I came back from Shangam, um, I've really taken to heart and wanting to reincorporate into Praise Band as a devotional time, because we're not just about the music. We're about experiencing God and furthering our connection with him in our daily lives. And so, up until recently, I've been writing our devotional series. I start with a scripture reading, and then I'll base the whole little, it's like a mini sermon of sorts, off of a contemporary praise song that can teach us an important lesson, as well as expose us to new music, uh, new artists, et cetera. That's where we found that version of uh, Be, Thou My, uh, Be Thou My Wisdom. Last week it was uh, You Are My Wisdom. We found that a couple months ago, and I'm like, I have to share that. I think it's been a really effective way of doing our devotionals and exposing us to new music. And like I said, most of our music's come about as a result of that, the new music anyway. But we have a brand new song this morning we're going to get to share from our devotional series. It was the last one of 2019. I'm personally really excited to, to sing it with everyone. But with the new year comes new ideas, and for us, a brand new devotional series. Last week, we started reading this little book. I don't know if everybody can see it. It's a little book called The Reason by uh, Lacey Sturm, who's the for former lead singer of a multi-platinum Christian hard rock slash metal slash very heavy group known as Flyleaf, they went quadruple platinum in the U.S., which means they sold four million copies in their first year alone. Um, Lacey has wound up splitting off from them and doing her own solo worship project. 
Um, she and her husband now do a speaking and music ministry, um, and they work very, very closely with the Billy Graham Association, bringing God wor God's word to people that need it. And this is her story of coming to know who God is and the very difficult journey that she walked to find who God is. We felt a kinship with her ministry, and we all related to her because she is a worship leader. She is a person who's gone through deep struggles, very deep struggles, and she has a lot to share. And I'll say this much. She's been through a lot. We're going to show a brief little video. It's about three minutes uh, where she's going to talk about her book. And if you're interested, during coffee hour, about 10 minutes into coffee hour, we're going to show a more in-depth look at her ministry and what she does and one of her and her husband's new songs that they just put out. So we're going to show the video now, but at about 10 minutes into coffee hour, feel free to come back and we'll show the, uh, we'll show the other video if you're interested. Uh, Chris, can we show the video? So I toured the world with heavy metal bands and was able to play music for the very people that I was the most passionate about. And after the shows, I would stand in line for, you know, I would stand with these kids who were in line for hours just to, just to talk to them for a couple seconds at a time about their story and what they went through and to hear the stories about how the music that we played or the song that we wrote came on right at the same time that they needed to hear it. And the stories that I felt were the heaviest and the most important and urgent were the ones I heard about kids who, who had contemplated suicide and somehow hearing the music or my story ended up interrupting that process somehow. And they would say thank you for your music and and I would just weep and want to hold them and you know because I'd hug them you know and say I'm so glad you're still here and I still believe like just how overwhelming it is that God can use the worst things in our lives and make something so beautiful out of it and and he can help us get through hard times and then when we share the story of how we got through those hard times how um, other people come through them as well so whenever my husband suggested that I write a book um, you know obviously it was not something I'd never done before and kind of overwhelming to think of but he believed in me he made space for me to do that and um, and I really enjoyed doing it and and I, I thought wow maybe I could hand a book to somebody and they can actually go home with it and and it would be almost like you know we actually they got to spend that much more time with me you know and and get to hear some of the things that I've learned and, and been through and maybe it would help them and as I wrote I could see those faces of those people that I was hanging on to trying to convince them you know you're worth loving you are created by a God who loves you, a good God who's an amazing artist and you're one of his masterpieces and your life is important no matter what anybody else says to you. I think that's the most amazing thing about getting to write a book is being able to hand it to those kids, the ones that are hurting, the ones that you can't go home with but you wish you could have more time with and, um, and I think, you know, I think that's the most important reason, the reason I wrote a book. So that's the book we're reading in Praise Band. And I'll close by saying this. If you're someone who's looking for a genuine way to plug in here at Ocean Community Church and look to be involved with an active ministry that's growing, come check out Praise Band. We're really, really looking forward to moving forward in 2020, and we're excited to see where God leads us this year. Thank you guys so much for, for listening this morning. Good morning, everyone. Just want to thank Justin for taking the time to put that together for us and also for everything he does with our group. He puts a lot of time in, into putting these devotions together for us to um, work together. 
Um, but the songs we have today um, should hopefully reflect Pastor's message. Um, we're just talking about our faith and hope that we put into God and the trust that we have for him. So please stand as we sing, Today is the Day.
Indeed, we're very grateful for the ministry of Praise Band. It really is a ministry. It's really a small group in and of itself, you know, one of those small areas where people can gather to uh, minister together. And uh, just like food ministry is almost the same thing in that sense. We gather to do ministry in the community. We pray together and, uh, and so many different gifts, many different ways. The um, uh, Oceans is a great song that um, comes to us from Hillsong in Australia. So let's remember Australia in these days with the fires that are going on. And uh, it's a song that invites us to a kind of a faith life where we are stepping into the uncomfortable and the unknown and the unexpected. Uh, so it's, it comes from the scriptures where the apostle Peter is in the boat and Jesus walking on the water and Peter gets out of the boat onto the water. And so it really is a call to us to uh, follow Christ in, in new ways in uh, times that are unknown. And the book of Acts is really that kind of a story as well. So uh, where they just kind of go to new people and see what God is going to do. And so uh, we still are in the book of Acts, as, as it were, and God is continuing to lead us into new ways of ministry, like video and like uh, Facebook streaming here that we have. And so we just step out in the waters and we see what God does. So our scripture today is in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. And uh, we are uh, in a series as we start the new year about foundations. So we're going to talk about what are some of the places we can stand when it feels confusing, when it feels like we don't, we're not sure exactly what's going on. What are some of the basics or the core things that we can hold on to in our Christian faith? And one of those is the Lord's Prayer. And so uh, we're going to just take time today to kind of give a quick overview of the Lord's Prayer, as it were. Um, just pull out what the different parts might mean for us and what Jesus uh, gives us to direct and orient our lives in those times when we are not sure which way to go, what to do. The Lord's Prayer kind of calls us to the, the core and the foundation. So we'll, we'll do that. Now, the Lord's Prayer you could find in two Gospels. You could find it in Matthew 6, where it is in the Sermon on the Mount before you come to Jesus talking about the wise man who builds his house on a rock. And so Jesus is kind of giving it as part of the wisdom for our lives. Uh, but in Luke, it comes in a slightly different way. And uh, so in Luke chapter 11, it comes as part of a teaching on prayer. So I'm going to read that whole section for us uh, that the Lord's Prayer is embedded in. And so uh, here are these words uh, of Jesus' life and ministry. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. And so you see here, and, and we'll point this out, that the Lord's Prayer is not always done exactly the same way, even in the scriptures. And so Jesus would at different times use different words, different forms of it, uh, but always with the same themes uh, that he wanted people to use as centering. We talk about prayer as a centering practice, as a time when we get out of all the anxiety and confusion and we just center ourselves. And so this is, becomes a centering prayer for people. And then he said to them, and then he gives us some insight about a prayer. He says, suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, Yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up 
and give him as much as he needs. And so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. After all, Jesus says, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so Jesus encourages us to be people who are bold in our prayers, to continue to seek uh, for what it is that we believe God uh, has for us, and then to believe in a God who is good and who cares for us. And so uh, wonderful centering thoughts that we'll take up today in our message together. So I want to share a children's message. We're going to try the wise man built his house on a rock again today, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So... Uh, any of our children want to come forward? I see your children. Hi. Nice to have you here. What's your name? Amelia. Amelia. Nice to have you here today. You know how to do praise band, don't you? We're going to have to get her up to help praise band, show how praise band goes. Good job. All right. So have you ever heard the song, The Wise Man Built His House on a Rock? No? Okay. Well, these, these young people here, have, good to see you today. All right. Nice to see you today. You got your robot man with you today? What's it? What is it? His name is Optimus. Okay, not a robot. Okay, well, good. I'm glad he's. Well, maybe Optimus can sing with us today. Okay, so uh, we're talking about the things that Jesus said, and we, you know, we're Christians. We believe that the things Jesus said are very important to us, and that they are um, the the things that can help us to find our way through life, guide us. Uh, I, how many of your cars, do, do your parents use GPS on their phones and it kind of tells you where to go, turn left, turn right? Yeah, yeah, they do that, right? I don't think you guys do that yet, but anyway, anyway, GPS, right? It goes, so the, the prayers of Jesus are like GPS. They say, go this way and then go that way and then go this way, and then you'll get to a peaceful place where I want you to be. And so that's a foundation for us. And so Jesus says, if you listen to his words and put them into practice, you're like a wise man who built his house on a rock. So we're going to try to sing this song and do the hand motions, okay? We're going to try it again because we're doing foundations for a couple weeks. All right? So let's see. A wise man. So we could do this. I was looking at some videos this week, right? A wise man has smarts. So the wise man built. So let's build. And then how can we do a house? How about this? House, like this, house upon a rock, right, a rock. So the wise man built his house upon a rock. Wise man built his house upon a rock. Wise man built his house upon a rock. And the rains came tumbling down. So that's what Jesus says. And the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. But the house on the rock stood firm. Okay, so that's the good thing, right? That we want. But then there's the foolish man. So this is, I saw some videos where they did, this is the foolish man. He's like this. Now don't do that to any of your friends. Don't, <laughs> don't do that to your friend. The foolish man, okay? So let's try it again. You ready? Foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rain came tumbling down. And the rain came down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. Rain came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand, what do you think? Went splat. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, it fell down, right? Because it didn't have 
a strong place to stand. Like we have a firm foundation to this church. This is a cement right under there. Yeah. yeah. So, so if Jesus says, if you listen to my words and you do them, then your life will be strong. And so we want to do that. And so Jesus tells us the Lord's Prayer today. And uh, so we'll be studying that. And we read it in the scriptures where Jesus says to pray to a God who knows our needs and who can give us what we need day by day. So let's pray and thank God. Lord, we thank you for each of these young people who are beginning to learn what it means to build their house in a wise way, to build their life on solid um, teachings. And so we're so grateful for your teachings that uh, show us how to uh, have a, a steady and firm life and when all kinds of things come our way. Help us to build our house on your words and put them in practice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks. So I'm going to let you break out and uh, go to do some learning about Jesus' words to build your house on a rock. Good. <laughs> she knows how to do this. <laughs> it's good. Good job. Yeah, I have your Bible, too. Yeah, so, so it's good for us to be gathered today. Um, so let's go to prayer. So let's pray for Puerto Rico, too, right? So Puerto Rico is in a, a difficult state, and uh, a number of missions are at work there. Australia continues with the, the fires, um, you know, and we're, I, have you been watching? I've been watching the koala rescue. Yeah, that's very sad, right? right. So there's plenty of uh, rains came down and the floods came up in the world, right? So, so we need to find our firm place to stand. So let's pray for that. And again, let's pray for Althiel's family in his passing. Uh, you know, we're very grateful to everybody who has prayed and who is a good friend to Al for years, right? 20, over 20 years, Al stood at the door and uh, greeted people and welcomed people today to early service. And, um, but uh, the family appreciates all that this church has meant to Al. So thank you for your part in that. Uh, other requests we need to remember today. Tom? A friend of Tom's has cancer, and Tom is here today. Tom had double knee replacement, and uh, he may he may not make it to the end of service, but we'll see. Neighbor recovering from cancer surgery. Okay, uncle is ninety-three. Okay, sister-in-law, right. Yeah, let's pray for Doris Lyman, too. Some of you know Doris. Doris is one of our members who is 102. And uh, she's starting to feel weaker these days. And so let's, let's pray for Doris as well. What's that? Yeah, servicemen and women in these times of uh, international tensions. Let's pray for, for that. And for the families with that uh, airliner that went down. Right? Right. Let's pray together. Lord, in the midst of our service, we take time to pray. Lord, you thought prayer was very important. You thought that prayer was essential if we were going to cope with life. And so, Lord, we take this moment to practice what you taught us to practice. We take this moment to pray. And Lord, you encourage us to pray because you tell us that oh, there is a Father who will give good things to those who ask, that we can ask in the confidence that you'll provide. And so we come with gratitude that we can come into your presence, that we are welcomed in spite of our failure, in spite of our brokenness, that your mercy overcomes all of that, that you forgive us and you welcome us. And so we come grateful today. And so, Lord, we lift to you our world. Lord, you are concerned for more than one family, one person, one nation. You are concerned for the world. And so we come as people who believe that God so loved the world. And so, Lord, we come praying for our world. And so we pray for uh, all who suffer in our world. Lord, we are mindful of the blessings that we have in our country and our nation, and we pray for people for whom uh, life is more difficult. We pray for people who 
uh, are ill. We pray for people who are hungry. We pray for people who live in fear. We pray for people who are refugees. That because of violence or hatred or war or famine have uh, fled to try to find something somewhere else. And so, Lord, we ask your grace for all who suffer in our world that your people might respond as you taught us in the parable of the Good Samaritan, that our neighbor is anybody who is in need. And so, Lord, we pray that your church will respond, the billions of people who are Christians in the world will respond to the needs of others. Lord, we pray together for our nation. We ask your grace in our times of uh, challenge. We pray for all of our elected officials that you would give to them wisdom, that we might live in truth and in justice and in peace and in freedom. Lord, in a time when it's so hard to know what is true in an age of made-up videos and made-up stories, Lord, give us the ability to be people who seek to know the truth. Lord, we pray for our community. Lord, we are mindful of people in our community who face times of difficulty. We think of mental illness challenges. We think of addiction challenges, as well as the physical challenges. So we pray for teachers, for doctors, for nurses, for counselors, Lord, for um, EMTs and our police and firefighters. We pray for our men and women in the armed forces who seek to provide uh, safety for us. Lord, we thank you for all people who serve and protect and ask your grace in their lives. But indeed, give families who find themselves in difficult times the ability to reach out and to lean on the provisions you make through your people, the gathered church. Lord, we do pray today for the concerns we've raised, and we think of the uh, families in the tragedy of the airliner, the, uh, we ask your grace for those families and for the family of Al Thiel in his passing. We are so grateful for his life, we're grateful for his faith, and Lord, we pray for uh, all who will grieve in this passing. And so Lord, we take a moment to lift to you the prayers that we carry on our hearts today. Lord, for the many ways you give us to be in ministry together, for praise band, for our food ministry, for our new consistory, for the Bible studies that we gather in, for deacons ministry, for caregivers. Lord, what a blessing it is you give us to work together to be agents of your kingdom, to be instruments of your blessing in the lives of others. How grateful we are for purpose and meaning in our lives. And so, Lord, we do seek to be faithful followers of Christ. And we remember the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Very good. So as we move into a new year, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of uh, things this year that will be disturbing, unsettling uh, in our national life. There's going to be a lot of news this year. Internationally, there are tensions that we face. Um, by the way, we did receive word from our ministry in Oman that things are well for them. Although, if you do follow international news, the Sultan of Oman just passed away. And a new Sultan has been put in place. And our particular ministry in Oman, the, in the Reformed Churches, America, America Protestant Church in Oman, has been there for over 100 years. 
uh, with the blessing of the Sultan. It's a very unusual situation in a country like that. But the Sultan has given property for the churches, encourages the churches, because our missionaries over the years were such a blessing to the country in education, in medical care, and so they put up with our teachings because of our ministries of mercy. And so let's continue to pray for Oman as well, but things are well there right now. And so as we go into a year where there's likely to be disruptions and challenges in our lives and confusions, foundations is a good start theme for us this year to get our, our feet on the rock, to get grounded a bit in uh, what can keep us going. Jesus tells this story in his teaching about a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And he means by that, he says, whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. And so that's, that beautiful word practice is so important. Like we talked about with praise band this morning. They come for practice and they have a practice of spiritual growth and fellowship that they share. And so it's, it's what we do in our lives. It's not just what we hear. So you can come to church uh, forever and hear the words, but if you're not putting them into practice, then Jesus says it's not going to be a foundation in your life. You've got to practice them. You've got to repeat them. You've got to learn them, and you've got to implement them in your life. And so the Lord's Prayer are some of those words that Jesus gives us to build a solid foundation of our lives and to put them into practice. And to put the Lord's Prayer into practice doesn't just mean you repeat it in prayer, but it means that what it says becomes part of your life. And so we'll think about that. Because it's really important, the words that we tell ourselves, because words create worlds. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but so much of the world you live in is created by the words you have spoken, promises that you have made to people, commitments you have made, uh, things you have said that have affected your life. Um, and so, so the world that you live in, to a large extent, is created by the words that you have spoken. And you have power to shape the world that you live in by the word you speak and the words that you practice. You know, in the very beginning of the scriptures, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then how does the world get order? It says, God said, let there be light. God said, let the earth bring forth a vegetation. When God speaks, a world comes into existence. And you and I are created in the image of God. And so our words are powerful. The book of Proverbs reminds us about the words that we speak and the world they create. Proverbs 15.1 says this, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but hard words stir up anger. And so the words that we speak can either create peace or they can create conflict. Again, in Proverbs 15, verse 4, it goes on and says, As gentle words bring life and health, a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. And so our words are so important. A person's words can be life-giving water. Words of true wisdom are refreshing as a bubbling brook, as a paraphrase of another proverb. In fact, James says in the New Testament that the tongue has the power of life and death. And it even says no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. So the Lord's Prayer is part of the words that Jesus gives us to speak into the world, to speak into our own hearts and minds that as we put them into practice will give us a kind of a world in which we will live, a way we will think about God, a way we'll think about others, a way we'll think about our own lives. Those words can create our world. And sometimes we need uh, something to hold on to in a particular moment, like visiting with Al in the hospital. And as I visit people in the hospital, so many times they'll say to me, it's so confusing here. I just get to sleep and they come in and they want to take blood and they want to do this, they want to do that. 
there are those core things that they can remember, like Psalm 23 and the Lord's Prayer. And those just become kind of a rope to hold on to. They become an anchor in those confusing times. We need those words, a foundation you can go back to. And so we have the Lord's Prayer. Now, it's true that there are different versions of the prayer, even in the Bible. So if you were to read the Lord's Prayer, Matthew and Luke offer it in different forms. And so you, if, if someone says to me, people will sometimes say this to me as, as a pastor. They say, well, pastor, what's the right way to say the Lord's Prayer? And the right way to say it, I guess, would be to say it in Greek. So we're, but we're not doing that, right? We're translating it into English. Uh, we don't have to say it. The Lord's Prayer is not some magic incantation that you have to say exactly right or else it doesn't work, right? I think people get upset about that. Well, they get upset with others who say, say it a little differently. Uh, it's kind of like the Harry Potter stories with the uh, Leviosar and Leviosa. I don't know if any of you remember this in the thing, but it's a funny moment in the, where, where she's telling them, no, you're saying it wrong, you know? And so I think sometimes we want to do that to others, you know, and other, you're saying it wrong. It's not going to work if you don't say it exactly the way I say. It's not, it's not some magic thing. It's meant actually to be thought about. Imagine that, that we would do, not just repeat something without thinking about it. It's meant for us to think about it. And it's one of the ways we build our house upon the rock. Put these words of mine into practice. Jesus didn't say, say these words of mine on a regular basis. No, he says, put these words of mine into practice. And so how do you practice the Lord's Prayer and not just repeat it? And so I'm going to give you some quick touch points about how you practice the Lord's Prayer. I've got six of them. And, uh, you know, I can hear my seminary professors saying, oh, no, that's too many. You know, you fail preaching course, you know. But if Jesus can put them all in one paragraph, I can do six of them in a little bit here in a sermon. I think we could do it. Jesus did them all in a single prayer. So in praying the Lord's Prayer, we see something about committing ourselves to approaching God as our family father. It talks to us about being in connection, belonging together, and caring about the impression we give of God to others. Participating in the inbreaking of God's blessings, trusting God that as I live one day at a time and I share my resources, that God will provide. I let go of revenge, hatred, and grudges as I acknowledge my own failures. And I seek a life that's not wasted in diversion or distraction. Now Jesus could have given a lecture about those six points, I suppose, but instead he frames it as a prayer. And it gives us guidance then for our lives. And it's a, it's a wonderful world that this prayer is meant to create, where we sense a sense of family, a sense of the love of God, a sense of a desire to live in peace with others and to share our gifts with them and to live a careful life that is devoted to the kingdom of God. A wonderful world for living amidst confusion that gives us a place to stand in the turbulence of life. So, so quickly to, to think about them. So it begins with this sense of family, our father, a sense of connection, a sense of belonging, our Father. And if you listen to the Lord's Prayer, so much of the Lord's Prayer is about us and our, not me and mine. So much of the Lord's Prayer is about the group and not the individual, as a committed group and a family. And so the Lord's Prayer is meant to create a sense of belonging together for us, our Father. Again, we always have to remember that when Jesus was talking about the Father in heaven, he was talking about the Father he knew, the Father that Jesus says would give good gifts to his children, would hear his prayer. Not the fathers that we are or the fathers that we knew. 
all of the fathers that we are, those of us who are fathers, and all of the fathers that we knew, and we all had a father somewhere, uh, they're all fallible. They're all not 100% uh, on track, what God would have them to be. All of our human fathers are fallible, and some are more fallible than others. In fact, some are very fallen and very evil. And uh, if you read enough books in the world today, you can read plenty of stories about that, about families that had horrible fathers. They leave families with trauma to try to untangle over generations. But Jesus says, our father, he's talking about the father that he knows in heaven, our father in heaven. And so somehow we have to get beyond those fathers that we have had in life to the heavenly father. And Jesus describes that father that we begin with a sense of belonging to a wonderful family, our father who are in heaven, who can be trusted to provide. And so Jesus goes on in the version of this given in Matthew. He says this, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? And we might say, well, we've known some fathers who have not been very good, right? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. And Jesus says, if you then, though you are evil, so none of you is perfect, but even in your imperfection, you know to give good gifts. He says, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And so the father that you, when we pray our father, we're praying to the father that Jesus knows, who can be trusted to provide, who knows what we need, who hears our prayers, whose watch, care, and love for us is an answer to the anxiety and fear that we face. A father whose care spans this life and the life to come. Jesus on the cross, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A father who's able to provide in this life and in the life to come. And that's the father that Jesus says, when you go to prayer, this is who you should address. This is how you should think of God. This is the world you want to live in, the world you want to create through the words that I give you, our Father. You know, it's a, it's a good question for us to ask if that's where we start or, or whether we have a long journey to take to begin our entrance to this path of prayer. When you go to God, how are you thinking about God? What, what are you expecting? Are you seeing God is angry at you? Are you seeing God is a God who has to be woken up as the, the Old Testament prophets of Baal did? They had to yell louder so God would hear. What kind of a God are you approaching as you come? Do you come to the prayer? Do you come to your times of prayer as saying, our Father? Can you say, I'm a beloved child of God. I belong to the family of God. I can trust and not worry. Is that how you can come to prayer? And, and I don't always come to prayer that way, right? Too often I'm not there. I'm worried. I, I think God is not really aware of what's going on in my life. I feel like it's all up to me. I feel uncertain about tomorrow. No wonder Jesus took time to go up to the mountains, to out into the desert. He would just go and say, I need to get myself back on track. I need to get my uh, thinking in the right place. I need to create the world that is indeed the world that exists where God is my Father, Heavenly Father. And so perhaps the prayer is also a challenge. Jesus is asking us, is this where you are? Can you say this? Our Father. This is what Jesus invites us to put into practice. And if he says, we do that, the rain can come down and the floods can come up and we'll still be standing because that's the world that these words have created for us. And it moves from that, our Father, to the respect for God. Hallowed be your name. May your name be kept holy. May we live in respect at the awesomeness that you are God, the creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime, the expanse of space, the mysteries of physics, stars and atoms, fission and fusion, the rainbows and the sunsets, the tomatoes, the potatoes, the roses, 
the orchids, this amazing, awesome God. May we live with a sense of respect, altogether good and wise, God of redemption and grace. May we revere your name, hallowed be your name. And so coming to the Father who cares, we come with respect for the greatness of this God. It all begins with a vision of who God is and who we are in relation to God. And really to pray that God's name would be respected in the world says something about how we're going to live as people who bear the name of God as we carry it into the world. It's not only a vertical prayer where we pray, may your name be respected, but it's kind of a horizontal prayer as well that as we carry your name into the world, may people learn to respect you. May they see who you are. May we do a good job as you carry, as we carry your name. You know, as Christians, we carry the name of Christ. And people judge Christ by Christians. They say, oh, God? Yeah, I know Christians. I'm not interested in God. I mean, how do we, is God's name hallowed and reverenced by the way we show up in the world? People judge the God we name by us. It's kind of like a child carrying the family name. Oh, you're one of the, that family, the Smith family, Jones family. And, uh, and then what they do reflects on that family. We, who carry the name of Christian, reflect on God. God's name is either hallowed or not by how people perceive our lives. It's a challenge for us to bring that honor to God. Uh, one person has said it this way. It's a healthy reminder that the Lord's Prayer cannot be prayed by those who say, I like Jesus, but don't believe in the church. The church is the people of God. God's name must be respected within the world through the church as a conductor of God's reputation. You can't pray the Lord's Prayer, at least not in the way Jesus expected, without doing so for the sake of the church as the worshiping and apostolic people of God. You, so when we pray, hallowed be your name, we're praying, Lord, I hope we do a good job <laughs> representing you. Help us to do a good job representing you in the world because your name is to be hallowed. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then, of course, we and naturally, if we want to honor God and see God's work done, that becomes a primary purpose in our lives. God, you are awesome. You are the God who cares for me. You're the God who calls me to be in the world so people will respect and honor you. And so may your will be done. Your will be done on earth, not mine. You know, that's hard. So much of the wisdom of Jesus is wrapped up in this thought that if you seek the wrong thing, you'll damage your life. If you seek, he said at one point this, he says, if you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. Jesus says, there, there are ways people think life is to be lived. Live the way I'm telling you, and you'll find that that brings you what they're looking for. And so it's this call to live our lives as instruments and sign and a foretaste of the kingdom of God. It's what your life is about. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. And uh, so in the world that God wants to create, and all these things will be added to you. And so as you commit yourself to not saying, well, I, this is what I want, so I'm just going to get it, but I'm going to devote this life and this time to Christ, and lo and behold, what we were looking for comes to us. Connections, relationship, people, grace, supply, resources come to us as we live out our life doing the will of God. And so putting that into practice becomes so important. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then he comes to uh, one of my favorites. Give me this day my daily bread. I think that's just wonderful. It creates a world of everyone for themselves. Give me what I need. It creates a world of selfishness and greed and allows me to ignore others and look out for number one. Oh, wait a minute, that's the wrong translation, isn't it? 
right? That's the wrong translation. That's not what it says. It says, give us this day our daily bread, not me and my. Give us and our. It's really a continuation of our Father, the community together. We are a family. We belong together. Give us this day our daily bread. We belong together. We look out for each other day by day. And the early church put that into practice. If you look at the earliest existence of the Christian church in Acts chapter 2, it says that they provided for each other. They came together and there was nobody hungry. They, they took their resources. They made sure that everybody had what it was they needed. Give us this day our daily bread. And so we do that. We try to do that with our food ministry, with our deacons, with even people here who support and encourage each other. You say, well, God has given me uh, some more here that I have, and I'll share that with you. This is the practice of the Lord's Prayer. John, who gives us the Gospel of John, also gives us some letters. And at one point, he says this in his letter about our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. He says, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? That's a good question. And it's a question that the Lord's Prayer answers for us. It says, give us this day our daily bread. And so sometimes the way God provides for me is through you. And sometimes the way God provides for you is through me. That's the way it works. That's the family of God. That's the community of faith. That's the world that the Lord's Prayer wants to create as we say the words and we put them into practice. And then the fourth is where we get all our confusions and we want to tell everybody they're saying it wrong. Anybody ever wonder about that? Is it debts or is it trespasses or is it sins? Right? And I put an article up on Facebook. It's kind of a long article. It, it explains how, how all this comes to be. Um, uh, and, and so I'll note this. They're all okay. <laughs> they're all okay. All of those words appear in the Gospels around the Lord's Prayer, sometimes in the different versions of it, sometimes in Jesus' comments about it. And so all of those are okay. If you're Protestant, Reformed, uh, Presbyterian, you pray debts. And that is a word in the Lord's Prayer that has the sense that we create this moral obligation that when we fail, and, and people in AA know this, right? They talk all the time about uh, making reparations to people that they've harmed, that we try to do something. We have an obligation to do something for the people we've harmed. So we have debts from our wrong actions towards others. So the, the debts fits. If you're Orthodox or Catholic, you prayed trespasses. And trespasses is also a word that appears in the Bible in the Lord's Prayer. And it talks about crossing a line. So you, you cross a line with somebody. And uh, Jesus would talk about that when you call your brother a fool, for instance. He would, you're crossing a line that you shouldn't cross with them. So trespasses. And then if you're part of ecumenical or modern churches, which is how we're doing it, um, you would say sins. And that word has to do with where we have violated what it is that God calls us to in our lives. So all of those are correct. Forgive us our debts, our trespasses, our sins. But then Jesus says, for we also forgive all those who have debts and trespasses and sins against us. And so the challenge is to put it into practice. Somebody posted this this week on Facebook, and I thought it was so good um, for this. Forgive us our sins, for we forgive those who sin against us. Um, all it takes is a simple apology. Like, hey, I messed up. Let's fix this and drop it. Right? But people are stuck in their childish ways and would rather hold grudges for the rest of their lives than own up to the fact that they hurt somebody. And what would it be to live in a world that practiced the Lord's Prayer, that practiced a world where people 
said, you know, I, that wasn't right. I'm sorry I did that. How can I make that up? How can we live together in peace? That's the world the Lord's Prayer wants to create. That's what we're praying. That's what we're committing ourselves to. Another person published this. I thought it was so good. <coughs> If the Lord's Prayer was being practiced, imagine what seven billion humans could accomplish if we all worked together and respected each other. Instead of all the money that goes into conflict, it could go into food, it could go into health, it could go into all kinds of things. You know, imagine the world we could create if people practiced the words of the Lord's Prayer. And then finally, it says this, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So I was trying to think about the, what this means as, as we think about God leading us. So we say this, God leads us in our lives. God takes us into life and we go, our feet are structured by God. So, so the, the way that the will of God leads us in life. And in this prayer, we're praying that the places where God leads us will be safe places, not dangerous places where we can slip and fall and be in trouble, where it'd be easy to get off track and into danger. Lead us not into dangerous places. I, I had to think of a place called Pulpit Rock in Norway. I don't know if any of you have ever seen this or been there. Uh, Pulpit Rock is, is one of those things in the fjords of Norway where it, it's a 75 by 75 foot square flat thing that is 2,000 feet straight down. And so Pulpit Rock, and you can take a hike there and you can go there and people go there. And I have to take a deep breath. People sit with their legs hanging over the edge. I can't even, I can't even think of that. Right? But when we took our kids to the Grand Canyon years ago, it was the worst trip we ever had because I was, I couldn't let anybody go w within 20 feet of the edge. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 you can't go. And so, so when we pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation, it's as, as if we're saying to God, God, let my life go in places that are not dangerous places. God, and, and if I go in those dangerous places, keep me. And, and it's true, right? There are times in your life when you're near something that could go really wrong. You can make a really wrong choice. There are moments where there's that temptation to, to go off track, to get diverted, so that your life goes down another road that's not going to be the road that brings the blessing of God, that fulfills the will of God. And so we commit ourselves in the prayer to ask God to keep us safe on track and away from dangerous situations. It's kind of like Pilgrim's Progress, too. I don't know if any of you have read Pilgrim's Progress. If you haven't read Pilgrim's Progress, I encourage you to do it. It's a book that's an allegory written a couple hundred years ago about a Christian. And Christian is on his journey from the city of destruction to the celestial city. And along that path, uh, as he's led by God along that path, he encounters all kinds of dangers and temptations. And it's a wonderful book that causes us to be careful about what's happening in our lives, where we're going. There are times we can get stuck. Uh, at times we can get diverted. And in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, God, help me as I'm going through life and as you lead me through life, not to get stuck, not to, to fall off the edge, not to get diverted. Keep me from evil, keep me from temptation, because I want to stay on track for what it is that you want me to do. The Lord's Prayer is wonderful for creating the world that God wants created. One brief Sunday on the Lord's Prayer. We could do a month or two on the Lord's Prayer, but we've got other places to visit for foundations as we start this year. And maybe this has been enough to give you something to think about through the week as you say that over and over again, to think about what it means if you were to put it into practice. Because everything we need is there in the Lord's Prayer. It's kind of like the tomato sauce commercial. Remember that? Somebody says, well, how about this? It's there. How about this? It's there. How about this? It's there. Here's my challenge to you. I want you to find something in life, in your life, 
or in the world that the Lord's Prayer doesn't address. Because it addresses everything that we need. It's in there. Find, challenge you. Come, come back next week and say, Pastor, I found something that the Lord's Prayer doesn't cover. It doesn't give me any guidance. It doesn't give me any insight for what to do in this situation. And if you can find that, then I want to talk about it. But in the meantime, there's plenty in here in this prayer for you to put into practice. And Jesus says, if you'll put it into practice, that'll be a good thing. And so I'm going to trust him on that. And I'd encourage you to trust him on it, too. So I'm going to have a praise band come and close. So as Justin mentioned earlier in the service, the last song we're doing is a new song for everybody. It's called My Lighthouse. So you can please stand and join with us as we sing.
pray together as we close. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to us that you are the light of the world, that those who follow you would not walk in darkness, but would have the light of life. And so what a blessing it is that we have your words, we have your spirit. Lord, and those provide for us guidance, they provide wisdom for us as we put them into practice. Lord, may it be that uh, our faith is not just hearing things and repeating things, but it's thinking about them and putting them into practice so that our lives begin to be grounded firmly on the foundation you give us. And so, Lord, guide us this week as we go that we might practice the Lord's Prayer. And as you go, people of Jesus Christ, may you go in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and every day. Amen. So please join us for fellowship, uh, coffee hour, and if you come with a burden, don't leave without sharing it with somebody.